Okay, welcome tonight. We have Steve Powell, who is a father, mentor in a CSS in North Minneapolis. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Steve Powell. I'm a um, CSS mentor. That's community safety specialist. And I'm a father. And I have three sons. And I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm from a big family. I'm the sixth child of 12. Six girls, six boys that my mother raised. And I'm a pillar of this community. I was raised in this community from 74, 75, and I'm here now. Here, yeah, cool. So you say you was raised here from 74, 75. So where were you born? I was born in the state of Louisiana, Lake Providence, Louisiana. That's, that's uh, the bottom of the map, the, um, what they say, the boot. Yeah. The main city is New Orleans. I would say I had to be, I think, nine or 10 years old, eight, nine, 10 years old, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm originally from, I'm here. Yeah. I know that in your work as a CSS, what inspired you to take that um, career that, in that line of work? As a CSS mentor, I, um, I had mentors in my life, and I watched over the years back in the, the early 1980s, we had, we really had only one community activist here, and that was Spike Moss. So, so that inspired me to be this one day as I got older, to be I wouldn't say a uh, community activist, but active in the community, which, which people look at me like I'm an activist. But, but I, 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 um, I, I really wanted to do something in my community to, to protect my community, uphold my community, and serve my community. Not as not as be, being a police mm -hmm. officer or more, more so like a freedom fighter. What a, they call or, it? Yeah, freedom fighter because um, I didn't grow up in that Black Panther era mm -hmm. where where that where I had to to be that icon of my community. But now that I am an icon of this community. And people know who I am. People know who my family are. And I get that love from when I go out in the streets because they know, they know my family history and they know me because I was the one that paved these streets to make a name for my family. What make you want to give back to this community by, um, you know, spending your time here? Because now that what I see that my community has changed a lot over 40 years that the area I grew up in, we had a community in the same area right here where, where we're speaking at now. I grew up just just a block away from where we where we speaking now, and and uh, it, it was a community. It's like there's no we don't have unity no more. There's no unity because it's it's all different people from different areas that I don't know the community that they had where they grew on where they grew up from. We had a community. Mm -hmm. It's 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 not it's it's, it's not here because. There's no unity here. So, uh, growing up when you were younger, what things that, what things did you do as a com in the community that's not here anymore? Like, what activities or places and spaces were there growing up? And how was community back then? Community was we had community centers. 
we don't have community centers anymore. All that stuff is all that stuff is closed down. And and um and and is and and the, the community that that's that's open like North Commons, it's everything is monitored now. It's it's under a tight security. We didn't we, we didn't have that as kids where we going to everything was innocent. There's nothing innocent anymore. And and um and by by me I could walk around this this neighborhood, not worry about nothing, not worry about am I gonna go home tonight. Not walking out the door, am I gonna get shot? Or, or my kids, I have to worry about where my kids at. My nieces, my nephews, I gotta worry about these things now. So, so now that I'm, a, I'm an adult male, alpha male, that I have to protect my family. No matter if you blood or if you friends, because family is, is friends now. Because because we don't we don't have that. I mean, your 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 family members can be your worst enemy, and 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 people prey on that. And if if you if you're not if you're not, I won't even say smart enough, smart enough to be to notice that when somebody is is being a certain way towards you, you you have to you have to be aware of your surroundings. To be aware is to be alive nowadays and it's, it's 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 sad because the schools that we have now we got we got a high dropout rate as kids going to school because everybody want that fast buck or everybody want to be the so-called what they call themselves the um, it the it person or you you gotta you gotta show you gotta show that that you're not you're not a pump you're not this you're not that and 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 um and when we had to show that we were not no pump we fist fall mm -hmm. they show them they're not pumps they go get guns they go get weapons and to eliminate their opponent was that you then took a life and you then throwed your life away. Absolutely. So I mean I, I mean it's it's crazy, but our community is gone. Yeah. Um I know that back in the nineties, maybe earlier, I'm not sure. <laughs> I haven't fact checked. You were involved in um a really dope organization that um, basically saved our youth, um, I think, our males. Was it intended for the males in the community or what? Can you talk about that, what yeah. that was and what y'all did to bring um, community back together and to keep our youth safe? Yeah, that was, that was a group called um, United for Peace. United for Peace was formed where um, when I was in the in the streets, I was working construction, but but I I was in the streets. United for Peace was, was formed as us being black men, and we was we was um, at war with each other. Say 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 more. Say so that um, that we was at, at war as. As as we was we was um, claiming our turf. Our turf was North Minneapolis. Then we had South Minneapolis. They had their turf. Mm -hmm. And basically, that's where that that little fiction came in, where we was gang banging, and and then now it's. People coming from other cities, Chicago, Detroit, L.A., St. Louis, Memphis, all these, all these different, different um, cities coming here, and it was, it was like, it was a corruption there. Everything got corrupt, and we wasn't having that. Y'all could come over here and do something to to somebody, 
in North Minneapolis without answering to us. So, so that became a problem. So we had the community activists in our community that wanted to look, we need to stop all this gang banging and, and, and uh, shooting. And so, the, so, so the heads of North Minneapolis, like me, I was one of the heads in South Minneapolis, we had to come together and, and, and form a truce because not that we're losing each other to the street, but kids are losing their life to the streets. And so, 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 so we had to form a truce. We had to go sit at a table like we're doing right now, sit at a table to be like, we got to stop this. Only way this stuff is going to get stopped is we stop it. So we had to become, my enemy had to become my friend for this to, for this to happen. It happened. It was successful, but then some other stuff Question. took place. How did your enemy, somebody you were beefing with or had a disagreement with, how did y'all become friends? Like, becoming friends with somebody you truly dislike, was there a conversation that took place? Or what, what made it be like, hey, let's just um, fix this? Okay. So. I'm gonna back up a little bit. That's when the crack epidemic came in. So either you're gonna gang bang or you're gonna make money. You can't gang bang and make money because it's, it's, you, you, you gotta watch your back because you're gonna be in different areas to, to make money. And, and so that, I remember we was at, at the roller garden and we was all sitting there. It was different gangs, South Side Gang and North Side Gang. And we and we sitting there and, and they was like, man, we got to, um, we doing it, we doing it. I'm like, hold on. Me and this guy had a conversation. Man, look, we ain't about that no more. We getting money. Y'all can get money too. We ain't got a gang bang because innocent people are getting hurt. Years later, everybody's seeing that we can have money without hurting people and support our family. So now, years later, that me and this guy that ran the South Side, and I was one of the guys over here, we sat down, we talked because we, we knew each other. And I'm like, dude, look, You running this? We I'm, I'm running. Well, I got this. We need to we need to come to a truce and have this man because it's something bigger out here. Because because if if we don't, we won't be here to be community activists. We'll be we'll be here to be community leaders. And so so that even though me and this little guy right here, and he's much smaller than me, that ran the whole South Side. We if, if we come to agreement. Then we could, then, then we could, did, did, this, this could happen. So now, so, so now, fast forward 20, 25, 30 years later, is that we look back at each other like, yeah, see, we was, dude, we was really at each other. But we are friends now. I can't say if, if the trust is there because I really don't trust nobody. But but if but if we here in the room together, Chill. we can trust it. We can trust each other enough to be like if anybody else right there yeah. that I know that I got his he I got his back. He know that he got my back yeah. because you the outsider. Um, so I know that y'all had um, I don't know if it's a tournament or uh, an AAU league or what the well, um, the basketball thing that you guys did in the community. Was that to, um, you know, help stop the violence and get the youth to know each other? And how impactful did that become in the community? Like, did it work? Did the level of shooting stops? Or what? And what made that ideal come to the table to be like, hey, let's get these kids out here hooping? What happened was, the city Inc. is down the street. And we came up with this idea. We were sitting in a meeting. 
to form a Boys in the Hood League. It started over here in, in North Minneapolis, Boys in the Hood's basketball league. So, and I and I can remember this like it was like it was yesterday. We sitting there and the Timberwolves sponsored this. So they came to the city and they painted the court with a with a Timberwolves court outside of outside of, of, of the city. And I remember that that um the a news reporter, I did the interview. And and um it was like on the, on the five o'clock news, and they see me on the news doing the interview with the news reporter about this boys in the hood league. So they did everything. So so that's how it, it got out, and and everybody started coming like, okay, what they got going on over there? So now when they came, it's like I mean it's, we had a team from St. Paul, South Minneapolis, North Minneapolis, and, and everybody we just we just sat down at the table and said that that we that we got a, a boys in the hood league going on because. Crime was up, so we had to do something where we need to stop this right here. So to, to bring everybody together, everybody liked basketball, and we was and, and we was we was playing basketball. That was the first year, so so it, it was like a pilot program for the for the boys in the hood league. And and um, after that year was over, the Timberwolves, um, I think her name was Christy Pearson or something. She was she was. Um, uh, financial or something uh, at, at the Timberwolves, and she was like, "Since this is over, we want to offer y'all jobs to be coaches." So we're like, "Okay." So now that's still staring us away from the street life. So they're gonna pay us to be coaches. So what we had to do, everybody that that played a part of the Boys and Hood League, we had we all had to go out and recruit kids that we could coach to be part of this league right here. So that's what really kept us, kept us from that, from the, from the, it, 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 was, it was a mindset, a mind change that, that we had to, to, uh, to reinterrect ourselves to, to be like, okay, this is some, this is some big. This is something that, 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 that the community need because we were losing our community because all the community centers were shutting down because of the, uh, the crime that was going on. So that's what. So that's what. That's what. That's what really, really saved, saved my life and a, and, a, and a lot of guys' lives because a lot of guys that was a part of this ain't even here no more, or they in prison. So um, growing up, you know, everybody has an ideal of what they want to be when they grow up. What was yours, and has it changed, or have you always wanted to grow up and be a part of the community, or did you want to be? Police officer, police officer. Okay. <laughs> you Are you like kidding that? me? Yeah. Okay. I'm finna tell you something. I knew I was in the fifth grade at Ann Wadden Elementary School. I'm trying. I'm trying to do my life uh, story in in under ten, five, ten minutes. By me coming from from Louisiana. And the, how the education was down there, that we had to be, we had to, we had to be educated to, to be something growing up in the South. My mother brought us here, and I didn't understand the school system because when I got my report card or progress report, I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't know what a progress report was. I'm looking at the progress report, I'm like, we got N's and S's on the progress report. I'm like, okay, what the hell is this? So I'm used to seeing A's, B's, C's, and D's, and F's. So they were like, no, the, the S's are satisfactory, the N's are non-satisfactory. It's just how, how they graded us in, in, um, in, in up north. But so what happened was right, right before we moved right here on, north, on um, 18th and Fremont, we lived in the projects. I still know the address, 427 Lindale. And um, I, was at, I was at school. Going in, in the fifth grade, going to school, and we, I came in from from lunch to recess. Had to go to the uh, his history class, and the teacher was like, because it was it was like election time, mm -hmm. so they wanted us to to pick a president, and I guess at the time I think it was either President Ford or Jimmy Carter, 
And so when I got in the room, like we sitting at the table, like we sitting at the table right here, they had all these, these uh, pictures of these white people, you know, uh, the presidents to be, to be, to pick to be a president. But it, it was a class thing. So I was like, so I, so by me being me, I said, why there ain't, ain't no black men that we can choose to be president? I wish I could see this teacher right now. This teacher told me. I don't, I don't even remember her name, but I know it was a woman. I don't remember her name because she told me, I said, why can't we, why can't I vote for a, a black man to be a president? This lady told me, I think it was 1975 or 76. She told me, she said, because there would never be a black president. This is what this lady told me. I said, so you saying that I would never be a president? No, you would never be a president. Why would you tell a kid that he would never be he he'd never be president? So she said, you need to pick something something else to be because you'll never be a president. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, before be, before become a black black president, it would be a woman president in the United States. She told me I was in the fifth grade. I remember was fifth grade. Was you 10, 11 years old? Yeah. And so this stuck with me. I would never be president. I said, okay. She said, well, pick something else. You I said, well, then um, I want to be a police officer. Say, no, I'm, fifth, I'm in the fifth grade. She said, you will never be a police officer. Why? Because there's no black police officer. Yeah, now, you know, this is the 70s, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. She said, you need to pick something else. I said, well, then um, I want to be a fireman. This is a true story. She said, you'll never be a fireman because black men can't be firemen. Now, you know, this is the 60s going to the 70s. And you know, so we never seen black police officers or black firemen. So she said, no, you need to pick some, you need to pick something else. I said, okay, I want to be, I want to be an NBA, play in the NBA. She was wow. like, you'll never be able to be in the NBA. you never be a football player. Okay, so this lady's crushing my dreams, crushing everything. So she was, so I said, I want to be a construction worker. So she was like, you'll never be a construction worker because blah, 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 blah. Was she playing? No, this lady was for real. Mm -hmm. She said it because this, you know, this is the 70s. Everything is segregated yeah. still. We just coming out this, out this shit, but I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Because coming from down south, every, my, all my teachers was black. Mm -hmm. So she was like, well, you have to pick something else, Steve. Swear to God. I told this lady, I said, well, I can't be none of them. Then I want to be Al Capone. I'm serious. I said, I want to be Al Capone. Uh -huh. She was like, you'll never be Al Capone because this. I said, well, then, then, um, then I don't know what the fuck I want to be then. <laughs> yeah, so saying? this lady sent me to the principal office. And the principal asked me, I, I told her what I was, what I, what she asked me the question, and I told her what I wanted to be, and she said I, I couldn't be none of these right here. So they called my mom and told my mom that this is what Steve is saying. He that he won't be. And they will never be. My mom like, well, what are you, what, what are you, what, what? Why y'all telling him that? So I went home, and next thing you know, I was out there at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was out to school. My mom moved up here. That's when we moved up here. I didn't understand that, that um, that, that how my mom got a a house that quick from from me saying this right here. I guess they like, look, we gotta get about this school. <laughs> So the thing is, you so have to bleep out the nigga in the, the yeah, yeah, you can bleep out that right there. But <laughs> but but what I'm saying is, but here's what I'm saying. Let me hold you get this over so you can ask me another question. So 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 the thing was, I wanted to see this. I wanted to see this teacher as I got older, mm -hmm. because she told me that I would never be these things. So I didn't want to be no police officer. Scratch that off. Fireman, scratch that off. But I but I became a construction worker. Mm -hmm. I worked construction. Mm -hmm. I was doing construction. And and um, I play basketball. You can do the and I box. Oh, oh! I said I, I told her that um, this is my most important part. I told her, well, I want to be Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. She told me that I'd never be Muhammad Ali. So I'm like, okay, I had to prove this woman wrong. So I box, and I was boxing. I did that. Play basketball. Play football. Became a, a gangster. Just I have, and I want to show that this is. 
All the things you said that I, that I couldn't do, that I couldn't be, I became that, and I did that. And, I be, and after that, I became a construction worker, and I did that. And so, so that led me all the way up to, to be a community activist. I wanted to be somebody that, that people like me, my, my skin color, the, who they can look up to just so I can be, so I, so I, I wouldn't have to crush their dreams like, this woman crushed all of my dreams. She definitely did. She crushed my dreams. So, and so here it is. And then when I get, get to high school, to go to North High School, and you know, everything like they still had who they wanted to play to be on the team. And I'm like, okay, now y'all crushing my dreams. A black boy up north in North Minneapolis. Now look at North Minneapolis now. So the community accepted us. Now the community left because white people ran the community. And they and, and we had things in the community that we can go and enjoy ourselves. We can't do that now. Kids, our kids don't have that. Because now the community leaders here, because of because the people that are here from out of state, they go to the people that from another state to come to save our community. And everything is underfunded. And everything is underfunded, and, and they don't know nothing about our community. But our community leaders, they look at these people, the people come and tell them that, the, oh, we can solve your problem because this problem is coming from this state, and that's it, and that's it, and we're here, and they funding these people. They hear that you got people that are here, that are in the community, that y'all just look over and go to the, the, the next thing that person come in and somebody say, yeah, I'm, I can, I'm here from Chicago, I'm here for this and then I can help y'all save y'all community. No, you can't, but they can. Because everybody from in this community, North Minneapolis now, is from Chicago. And it's, sti and it's, and it's still not happening because now, now you got, you, you done went from, from marijuana to, to crack, cocaine, to to, um, to heroin, pills, all that stuff. All the kids, all the drugs that the kids are using in, in, in Chicago, they're here. Our kids are using these drugs. You know they got new drugs out right where kids get high all right. The, the helium. The what? The helium where you blow up balloons and all that stuff. So kids are, are, are they, they getting helium, they get high off helium. Now. It's a new drug that they, they really getting buying helium and inhaling stuff and getting high off of it. Kids are dying. It's, 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 um, it's, 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 it's tough in the Somali community. So um, since the community, you know, because in North Minneapolis, we do um, try to connect with the community leaders, right, to figure yep. out what's going on and how do we make it work, right? So what are, what are some steps that um, maybe needed to be taken in order to get everything back as it is. Um, because here in North Minneapolis, you know, we have our, we have your good and we have your bad and everything in between. But how do we bring that village back to where kids are safe in our community? How do we um, get programs funded and continue to be funded for years after, not just as pilot runs, but you know, how do we make Minneapolis, North Minneapolis, how North Minneapolis used to be? Maybe it's a good thing that we're changing, or maybe it's a bad thing, but how do we get it back to that happy place where everybody feels safe in the community? You, yeah, okay. How do we get it back? Because you see what they're doing, they they regentrification re now. Because you, you see white people move back over here. Mm -hmm. So so the, so the thing is, is that what what's, what's taking place is that that we don't have we we can't we can't we cannot get business loans. Mm -hmm. They'll give us student loans. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll give us a student loan. They'll give us a car loan, and they'll give us a house loan. They will not give us business loans, because if we got business loans, like they come like everybody come here, like like all these gas stations, corner stores, whatever, you you even got you even got the um the um like. The, the, um, the Spanish people now, they running Popeye's chicken. You got all the gas stations that that um, that, that they got the, the the Arab people. They give them business loans. Now that that this gas station right here, that that is, it's a black pastor that got that right there. I hope it be successful mm -hmm. because 
we, it's designed for us, for us to not to have generational wealth. So that's what they're really afraid of. That's what's out of, out of our community. For us to, for us to have, to have our, um, to have community, we need to become business owners. We need to become homeowners and we need to have community centers. We don't have that because everybody is afraid to open up or have a business like that because they feel that people are going to come in there and destroy it. We have some, but some? they're not fully invested. You know, they yes. just got enough to keep it running and functioning, but yes. it's not like state-of-the-art equipment and, you know, things to keep our youth interested in wanting to show up to type of stuff hardly works. So um, I guess uh, actually properly funding these centers um, to win the kids back and to go to these places may be a step in a good direction. Yeah, because you know, here's, here's the good thing. It's like like we, we, we um, the, the CSS, this community safety specialist thing, right? So, by me being a mentor, we have apprentices that that um that 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 we mentor that 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 are going through through um the EMT classes. They really got EMT classes that that they didn't that they didn't graduate from, that 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 they're licensed from, and and they can go and get a job. The the young men that we have right now, and the the thing is the the good thing is about what it was, what it was, nothing going on is appetite for change because appetite for change grow their own garden, they grow their own food and whatever. So, so, so that's, that's, that's the thing. That's what's, that's what's going, it's going to have to happen because here, here's the thing because I've been doing this community work for so many years that, that, um, that I'd have been in so many different arenas where, where that, um, where, where that the, the community leaders that we had that's supposed to look out for us really only looked out for themselves. They used us to look out for themselves. Not, I'm not saying all of them, because here's the thing. What people don't know is that every spring, they got empowerment zone funds that they, that they issue out every spring to every different community. And this is and this, it's supposed to be, because I know back in, uh, 2005, 2006, every community is supposed to get two, $10 million for, for small businesses. <laughs> North Minneapolis only seen a million dollars in that. Where did the other nine go? Exactly. Where did the other nine go? It's be, because, be, or, 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 or 10 million, or the 10, what, 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 they, what they did, because the City Inc., where I worked at, the alternative school, City Inc. used to get, get 300 and some thousand dollars because it was a school. And then, the, then the, the the money had to had to pay they had to pay for teachers. So you had to do that for quarterly, and then then you get you get you get the other quarter of the money for that because it, it's a school and, and and kids are getting educated. Urban League only get only only was would receive fifty thousand sixty thousand dollars. Stair step eighteen thousand dollars. I mean these are numbers that they that they putting out for small businesses, black businesses, and and um and all the other businesses. That you you go out and and um and and try to get, they won't give it to you, unless you doing nonprofit organizations. But everybody is fighting over this little money, mm -hmm. and everybody is cutthroat. With with of everybody coming to the table to be like, this money right here is for these communities. All the other communities, you know, they they you know like Brooklyn Center and South Minneapolis, Eat Diner, they getting this money. But they 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 use they utilizing their money because it's going to be counted for. They like because in our community it's not going to be counted for. They going to just give them everybody they they'll, they'll be all right with it. And 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 every organization is fighting for this little money to to be to be sustainable for their organization or to 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 have some to 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 create something. Then you got to you got to sit there you got to come with all this paperwork to show that this is what we doing. Can we get funded? You might not get funded until the end of June, July, or August. You have, we have to pay our pockets to keep stuff going on. So now that it's a, it's, a, it's the end of the year, 
And that money, that do, oh, you owe, oh, we can give this money right here, baby. Give them 300000 Give them 300000 Give them 300000 Because December, December 31st, uh, give them a million dollars. If, they, if, it, if it's, they don't spend it up, then, then, you, then you know, then, then uh, we know that they don't, get again. they don't get funded again. So that's the thing. Course. Like everything you do is for North Minneapolis residents to see the beauty and bring peace or whatever of course. to the community. Um, you go hard for the community. Of course. And when things are not being done um, appropriately in the community or funds are being misused, you feel some type of way. I've been feeling this way for some years now. Is because I'm talking to the I'm talking to the community, the community leaders, the community activists, and y'all know who I'm talking to. Here it is, y'all got somebody from the community that's based in the community that y'all afraid to mess with. Because y'all think that I'm going to tell the secret. Y'all think this. That's how you think I'm going to tell the secret. What I want to do, I want to help the community. But since y'all can't pull no blinds over my eyes and I see, y'all don't want to mess with me. And that's fucked up. That y'all don't. So y'all, y'all, y'all gonna go outside the community to get somebody that don't know the community and and, and, and be successful because everybody wanna keep their purse filled. You got everybody, you got I can name so many different organizations over here that say that they, that they bought the community, but they don't give a damn about the community. They, they, they sit there, like you got a lot of people working with t-shirts on and all that, and all that right there. Okay, so you pay, you pay somebody $10, $11, or, what, or whatever, or and just have somebody up and down, walking down the streets, and they're not doing shit, and, and, and crime is happening. But these are your people that you're putting out here. They're afraid. We're not going, okay, and we're not even going to focus on those who are not doing. We're yes. We're going to give our intentions to those who are doing, right? Because um, it'll let be, me know it'll who be they are. Days. Let me know who they are, because I know we. I know what we're doing. I know what CSS is doing, and I know what Appetite for Change is doing. It's, it's, it's organizations out here that's actually doing the work. They. I'll, I mean, I'll let you know who they are. Yeah, let me know who they are because be, because I want to be in tune. And I, and I know that, I'm, I'm not saying everybody everybody is doing this, it's just the people that I know. They have a good heart, but stay in tune with the people that are in your community. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go out for outside resources and for somebody to come in here and tell us that y'all need to do this, y'all need to do this, y'all do that. No, y'all got access. All that stuff is downtown, it's access. Like, it's, it's in the book. Sounds like we need a community sit down, right? We do. We can host an event here at Community they ain't gonna like that. They gonna have to like it. We they gonna, gonna eat food they, they are. They gonna talk. like it, but they but they're not. Yeah, I they, think we, afraid. we could. I think we could. We could get them in here. They are afraid of me. No, we gonna get them in here because we gotta figure this out. Yeah, we can figure it out. But it's, it's it, yeah, yeah. We need it. We need to because because I'm tired of it. And I mean, it's you got kids losing their lives. Kids, I'm, I I seen kids. You know, 11, 12 years old. How off drugs? Yeah. Where did where that come from? COVID. Um, I think when COVID hit, a whole lot of things changed. Uh, people picked this up was, new this habits. This was before COVID. This was before why well, I didn't pay. Yes. I just now paid attention once yeah, I seen. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm, you know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. in the street. You in tune. I'm not. But I'm in the street. Yeah. So what the, what that mean is that um, I'm on the industry level, but my ears is still the street because I'm in the street. See, a lot of people, they want to be in the street, but they want to be in the streets. Mm -hmm. They can say that they, because you got people out here that in the streets, they're like, yeah, yeah, they doing, they're doing this, so let's go do this. Because, and you got a lot of people that Amalam chase and what's going on, and then they say, okay, we're going to do this right here because these, this, is, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Then you go knock on the mayor's door. We need to get, the, we need to get this funding for this right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, we, we need to get funding for year, every, all year round. Not because some, somebody that got, that got their life took, or, 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 or something that happened over here. No, we need resources for our kids because our kids are lost. Where's our, where, where's our future for our kids? They gone. 
But you have to be on your kids' back or whatever to do what you got to do for your, for your kids to be that because all of our kids, my family kids or whatever, you know, they, they, they like, y'all don't have to do this because we did it. And I, and I push my kids and everybody else's kids, man, y'all need to get educated. School ain't for me. I understand that. Well, if, if school ain't for you, then get a, get a trade. You can get a train. You got to go to. You can, it's gonna take you a few months to get a train. You can go to some of the academy and get a trade. That's gonna that's gonna follow you for the rest of your life. As long as you got that skill, you can you can feed your family. I got another question because you spoke about fifth grade and having your dream smashed. Yep. Um, maybe there is a young person, male or female, might catch this online. Um, what is something that you could say to them that will inspire them? Here's the thing for for you for you for you elementary kids. Don't never let nobody tell you that you can't be what you want to be. As long as you keep doing what you're doing, because I tell all my kids right here. Do what you got to do, so you can do what you want to do. What that means is, if I have to to go work this job every day or if I got to go to school every day to get this education and do this right here because, because it's, it's, it's self-discipline. Long as I can discipline myself to do this right here, I can do what I want to do when I, when I do what I got to have to do over here. So it's, 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 as long as you keep your dream, dreams do happen. Dreams do come true. If you want to be a football player, basketball player, doctor, lawyer, whatever, president, you could be that. But it's causes come with that. You got to have discipline. Don't let nobody crush your dreams because I grew up in an era where that they could do that. But I'm still alive. Yeah, well, I appreciate you for joining me tonight, um, sharing the table with me and talking about your story, your upbringing, um, things that happened, what inspired you and all that. So I appreciate you. Coming here, um, it's a chilly night. Yeah, it's a cold one. <laughs> it's a cold one. It's a cold night, mm -hmm. but it was well worth it. Right. So, with that being said, we're gonna end. Thank you. <laughs>